We're all attracted to curves in nature. It's innate, biology's way of helping us find a suitable mate to reproduce with. Curves, in all their human varieties, point to certain biological traits. So what of that most man-made of creations, alien to nature, the straight line? We can all appreciate the aesthetic of a piece of art or a well-tuned car, but it doesn't turn any of us on. Or does it? Object and sexuality is the term coined to describe individuals who quite literally love their objects. A haven for the OS community is the liberal city of Berlin, where I went to meet the OS community's figurehead, Erica Eiffel, to see if she could shed light on her attraction to the inanimate. Here we are in Berlin, in front of the piece of cake building, apparently one of the sexiest buildings in Berlin. I'm not so sure, Erica definitely thinks so. She's gonna sell it to me. I call him the piece of cake basically because he's got that wedge-like shape, you know, like a cut from a very, very delectable piece of dessert. I can stand right here where the wedge comes right to the center of me and I just really feel almost like uh, this building is piercing into me. See, in Berlin, there's a little something for everyone. <laughs> building like this, yeah. uh, loan time, how is that remotely possible? Well, see, it's not possible and that's probably the reason why I'm not in a committed relationship with the building. All I can do is ogle them and you know, kind of imagine what it would be like, but I accept the reality that this object is beyond my reach, you know, the unattainable. So this is kind of the uh, the male equivalent of like me seeing a supermodel on TV that I know I can never have. That is exactly the male equivalent. Why don't you live in New York City? I don't live in New York City because it's like a sensory overload. I mean, it's like you going and living... In the Bunny Mansion. If you live in the Bunny, bunny Mansion, mansion okay? Uh, you're right now, you're going, yeah, I do it, hell yeah. <laughs> Living but the, you know, the thing is, it's like over time, you'd be desensitized. Yeah. So, you know, you're just surrounded by lovely women all the time. You could be completely desensitized. It would suck. And, and you, I know it would suck. It would be, <laughs> and you'll be horrid. I, I, I wouldn't want to put you through that. No, exactly, right, <laughs> you know? exactly. Erica took me to see the object with whom she now shares a monogamous relationship. How apt that on the 20th anniversary of its dramatic collapse, we should find ourselves at the remnants of the Berlin Wall. Well, there's not really that much left of the Berlin Wall. And it's rather evident when you see this section of the Berlin Wall, two little pieces, and then you look down and you see the double cobblestone way. That was actually all Berlin Wall. It was 155 kilometers around West Berlin. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to take you to meet Thierry. And I call him that because he's named after the artist Thierry Noir from France, who did this graffiti back in the 80s. And he's here in Potsdamer Platz, Berlin. And this is my big fella. So my sticking point on why I still, as of yet, haven't fancied an object. You've still got two days, bear in mind. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get you, you know. <laughs> right. Everyone's got everyone's closet OS, they just don't know it yet. <laughs> okay, well the, 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 the sticking point for me is the fact that you believe that Bricky behind me has a soul, mm -hmm. and I believe that he's an inanimate mm -hmm. object. Right. Now, I'll go as far as to say that I believe that at one point everything on this planet was on the inside of a star that exploded however many billions of years mm -hmm. ago. And I can see that idea that we're all made up from matter that, that stems from the same origin. Mm -hmm. But how can you persuade me that he is he's a living creature? Give me your hand. Well, give me your other hand. Hold your hand right there. Okay. I want you to keep your hand right there. Okay. What do you feel? Uh, heat salt a little bit. Yeah, okay. Your hand's starting to get cold, right? This is cold concrete, uh -huh. okay? and your hand is warm. Yeah, yeah. And you're feeling the heat being drawn from your hand, right? And you feel the cold coming into your hand. Uh -huh. That's a transfer of energy, okay? That's energy, that's movement, okay? okay? Everything possesses this. It is a force in its own right. And this is some of the things that we pick up on, are these sensations, these vibrations, these transfers of energy. And, you know, basically, you don't need to listen to this wall. You know why? because you're already tuned in to listen to women, <laughs> okay. okay? I might be wired for women, but for some people the spectrum of sexuality isn't so black and white. Erica took me to East Berlin, where I met her good friend Susie, who led a very conventional life as a wife and mother before moving to Germany and realising her true desires as an object homosexual. I'm a nut on sci-fi, especially retro sci-fi, 
and I used to watch sci-fi films not because just because of the story but I loved the cool buildings yeah. and I, I somehow this seed was planted. Susie holds particular affection for industrial cranes which she has fused with her lifelong love of sci-fi. Liberator from Blake 7. <laughs> Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> this is the big fella, Klaatu. <laughs> what's, what's he from? Day the Earth Stood Still, Klaatu. <laughs> Crichton from Red Dwarf. Kalis, the Klingon Emperor. And Davros, the creator of the Daleks. The fluff is very important. It's like you're just caring for it and making a fuss of it and making cuddling it and it's soft and cuddly and cute. There's always been a crane thing. There's a crane fetish going on here. There's, a, there's always <laughs> been a crane crane thing going on. I've had the crane thing since I was about two or three. I, every, every other girl went to bed with a dolly, I went to bed with a crane. When I was 25 I got married and we were married for 22 years, but despite having a son, something just didn't quite feel right. I have experienced some jealousy, yes, but not from here, but I did l have a brief fling with a building in Potsdamer Platz, which was next door to the piece of cake, and mm -hmm. someone found out about it and was not very happy. No, she was not. She was not amused. No. Really? Yeah. yeah. It does exist. To me, Susie seemed little more than a huge sci-fi fan with a failed marriage, not someone who was in love in a way I could immediately relate to. So Susie took me on a tour of the Plattenbau grounds, where she articulated her feelings in the clearest possible way. Plattenbau means panel building, effectively like prefabricated slabs, which a lot of the British hate, I know. I was going to say, yeah, most people would, find, would probably think they were considered ugly by... Yeah. But you find them gorgeous. I find them amazing. Nothing can compete with this. The way I feel, nothing competes with this. Nothing holds a flame to this. This just does it for me. Unconditional. And there's just no easy way to explain it, but it's completely unconditional. The love I have. So, why, why that is, I don't know. But that's the way it is. I cannot explain why. It is completely unconditional love. Falling in love with a public figure or a cultural symbol is clearly fraught with difficulties. Intimacy verges on the impossible. In Trafalgar Square, I went to meet a woman who fell in love with the metropolitan equivalent of the village bicycle.